great. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to get started, folks. I think there's uh, we have about 15 people on the call. My name is Josh Tewksbury, and Gilles yeah, um, Sion is also here. We're both a part of Future Earth. Um, Gilles, you want to just introduce yourself quickly? Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Gilles Sion. I've uh, been working as a science officer for Future Earth for uh, a little over half a year. And I am uh, helping coordination work for the Health Knowledge Action Network, uh, as well as the Urban Knowledge Action Network, um, and part of uh, the Health Knowledge Action Network. There was a scoping uh, process that took place um, together with the Bellman Forum to, to set up uh, the baseline of the, the research priorities uh, for this call. Um, and that's, yeah, that's all for me. No, that's great. Yeah, and I, I'm so I'm just going to give a quick background on um, how you're hoping to help support this call and just uh, the framing of this, this webinar, so we can get everyone engaged. So I I run I I I'm sort of the point person for our relation for the Future Earth Belmont Forum relationship, and we've been working with the Belmont Forum to create uh, a climate uh, to create uh, collaborative research actions calls. Um, that support uh, global change and sustainability research. Um, I'm gonna just gonna go move forward here. <clears throat> if folks can't hear, there is a um, there's a few book bookkeeping things here as well. Um, if folks have any trouble hearing or um, need me to repeat something or stop, there's a raise hand function, and I'm gonna see if I can find it quickly. Um, let's see if I can get this going here um, under the presenter screen. Let's see. Uh, Jill, do you know how we can see if people raise hands or want to speak? Is that on there as well? Yeah, so actually, I hope everybody here. Chadia, do, do you want to just say whether or not you can hear us? I'm giving you access here. Can you just unmute hi, for a second? Hi, Jill, I can hear you well. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks, okay. Chadia. So That's I have great. everybody on mute, and um, that makes it um, a bit difficult for them to raise up. Um, but let me see if I can change that. Yeah, just be useful for if you know, so we can do a bit more interactive. Um, and um, if, if that's possible, that's great. And while while we're working on that, I will just give a, a quick idea of what we are hoping to accomplish. So um, I think. Um, Shadia, who just was, um, we're, we'll have a point in this call where we really do want people to um, to lean in and just tell us, you know, who they are and what they want to get out of it. So I'm hoping to make the general introduction fairly short so that we can get to questions and, and, and engagement between folks on this call um, and specific questions you might have about the CRA on climate, environment, and health. Um, so I was just going to give a bit of, a bit of background on that and then go from there. To uh, um, to a sort of a more open session. So, Shields, do you know? Um, should I? Do you want to? Are there any bookkeeping things about how we can have people flag or open or, or get involved, or how do you want to do that? Do you want to just have people shout out if they have a question? Yeah. So I I wrote uh, in the email that either people just raise their hands using the raise their hand function, or maybe uh, write just in the in the chat box if they they want to raise anything. Uh, and then we can point out who, who can talk first. So I don't see the chat box, and that's why I'm. That's why I was concerned. Okay. Oh, maybe under in the bottom of the screen, you should have next to the share function. You should have chat. You press chat, and it should pop up um, if it's not visible. And you can press participants list as well. And there's going to be two. Oh, I got it. I see it. Yeah, okay. and then. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so I can see it now. And so now I can see everyone's hands and Gilles, you can see them as well. So yeah. you can just hit the raise hand function if you want to speak. Um, that's great. And uh, we'll jump We'll jump back. Um, we'll get to your question right away. Um, so that's great. Apologies for the slow start here. Um, so basically, I'm just going to give a, a, a quick overview of the, uh, um, of the relationship between Future Earth and the Belmont Forum, particularly as it applies to this climate, environment, and health call. And then just dive in a little bit into the call itself. 
um, and some questions that have come up that Jill's has sort of collected and others have collected in some of these webinars. And then the fourth part is just us just talking with each other, making sure that we um, are exchange, you know, that folks have an opportunity to exchange their information as needed and that we just really make this about the questions that you might have around this call. So um, I think the, the first part is just understanding the future Earth and Belmont Forum relationship. The ba best way of thinking about this is that the Belmont Forum is a collection of funders um, that have come together to help support uh, global change and transdisciplinary research. And Future Earth is a network organization that has the same mission in supporting that kind of research and innovation ecosystem for sustainability. And our, our role in this is really to help support the community. So there's a funders group and there's a community support group. We do that community support. We work a lot with the Belmont Forum um, and we work, on, we work with them on all parts of their process. And so this is a collaborative research action that is jointly sponsored by Future Earth and the Belmont Forum. And our role in that has been to um, work with our um, uh, knowledge action network in health in particular um, and with other parts of our community to develop um, the, the call text that you're seeing to present this, um, the, the need for this kind of research in climate and environmental health to the Belmont Forum funders. Once we bring it to them, we, um, they then remake it because they are providing the funding um, so that what you see as a community or applying to that call is a, collabor a collaboration between future Earth and the knowledge expertise that is around the world um, part of the environmental health and the um, and a scoping process in which we asked a bunch of other experts around the world in an open process what they thought the most important research question here in the area. And then the funders' needs and the funders' particular focus areas and what comes out the other side is a combination of those things. We do this every year. So right now we're scoping um, uh, another proposal on, um, on human migration and climate change. Last year we did one on oceans and ocean sustainability. So each year there's at least one global, one collaborative research action from the Belmont Forum that is done explicitly in collaboration with Future Earth. Okay, so um, I think that's all, we, all I need to sort of say on that. Um, so I'm gonna just do a few slides on the Belmont Forum and how they work because it helps to figure out, it helps a little bit in understanding how to apply for funding from the Belmont Forum to understand what they are and what they are not. Um, they're, uh, they're turning 10 years old this year. Um, they're, um, they, were, they were established by funders um, in various, uh, so <clears throat> the, the best way of understanding the genesis of the Belmont Forum is there, there are, there's a 30 year history of global change communities um, that have come together around the world and been supported by um, public sector or national science foundation partners around the world, mostly in developed countries. Those funders got more and more collect collective and collaborative, and they formed the Belmont Forum as a mechanism to allow them to bring funds together across different countries and across different agencies to support common calls. And so that's what that's what the Belmont that's what this is in this collaborative research action of climate, environment, and health. Um, a key piece when developing proposals for the Belmont Forum is this linkage between stakeholders natural science, social science, and in this case, health sciences, for sure. Um, and, and the Belmont Forum focuses explicitly on proposals that include all of, the, all of these component parts you know, throughout the call, and I'll talk a bit more about that as we go forward. Um, but it's important when putting a team together that these different um, parts of the sort of transdisciplinary research ecosystem are represented within a proposal. Um, so uh, the basic, um, this map I think is kind of quite useful in showing both which countries have, have put in funding and support and been supported through the Belmont Forum previously. Um, the lot, those are the dark countries in this map. Um, the lines between them are just essentially a somewhat messy way of saying that all proposals and all proposal teams include multiple countries and that the teams are really designed and the process is designed to support international research and collaboration. Um, uh, and so there is certainly an expectation in the proposal process of um, supporting teams that can bridge between sectors and 
including industry, and, and also can bridge between disciplines, social sciences, natural sciences, health sciences, um, and can work together towards a co common, uh, that can create a narrative that, that, that shows that they are indeed a cohesive team producing product, um, producing all, any, any number of products, including communication products. So I think one of the things that d distinguishes Belmont Forum from a lot of other funding processes is the funding typically comes from fairly traditional science foundations around the world. And yet what they're trying to do with that funding is to push the boundaries of science so that it includes um, non-science partners in the proposal process. And so there's, and there's a much stronger um, uh, focus on how is the science going to uh, create opportunities for change in the world? How does it link to society? Um, this, this is, I think, probably um, the sort of, this graphic sort of represents what the Belmont Forum really is. And this, it sort of helps explain why it is sometimes a bit difficult to put a team together and to receive funding. So each of these dots represents a National Science Foundation, whether it could be DFG in Germany or um, NRF in South Africa or, the, or NSF in, in, in uh, Switzerland or the United States. Different countries, their National Science Foundations putting money into a, to a common pool. Um, and the, uh, and the, the point of this common pool is that the Belmont Forum a community writes the writes the writes the CRA that you're responding to collectively. All proposals are evaluated by a traditional review process, and they're jointly in the decisions on who gets funded is made jointly with a representative from each of the funding organizations in the room to make that make that decision. And then the principal investigators that have applied and are funded are then funded through their national science foundations. So if you're in Germany. Of you maybe BMBF or DFG if you're in South Africa and NRF or near the US NSF for example or NOAA or, um, would all be involved and so I'll go into that with more specific details as well but essentially that means that the funding for the Belmont Forum um, you you receive your funding typically from the from the organization that would be supporting science in your country there are exceptions and I'll get into those um, as we go through um, so, whoops, sorry about that. Just a little bit on this particular call. I'm going to go relatively quickly through this because this is in the call text and I want to just make sure we have lots of time for questions. Um, but the research themes that were jointly decided on um, were food systems and nutrition, heat and health, and climate sensitive infectious diseases. And it's important to recognize that in a proposal, you don't have to tackle all of these things and it wouldn't necessarily be expected that you could. You could choose one of them. And you don't have to tackle them everywhere. Um, a team from three countries can make a proposal that works in a fourth country. Um, they, and, and that's, that's okay. Um, there are requirements on what the team needs to look like. And there is guidance on what the topic area should be. But um, don't, don't think you have to be too restrictive in, for example, if you have three researchers from three different countries that you need demonstration projects in all those three countries. You don't. You, you need to basically build a team that can answer a question within the call themes typically. Um, and this is a summary of sort of what the, call, what the call themes were about. I think it's important to note that, you know, if you look at this and you see a research topic that you think is fundamentally important in climate, environment, and health and is not included here, um, a lot of us who helped develop this call also had the same feeling. The need was to, to prioritize for this first round of funding. And the idea was, was that in future climate, environment, and health calls, and there are future calls planned, that we would, that the, the community would be, we would support calls that are either more focused because of particular interest or hit a topic theme that is not in this list. So this is round one of that funding. Um, let's see, I'm gonna stop for a second, see if there are any, um, and, let me, let me, and if you have questions, Feel free to ask them now as we go forward. I have just a few more slides on the proposal aims, and then I'll get to some questions. So uh, some questions that were asked previously. So feel free to, to jump in if you, if you want to. Um, the proposal aims are bridging knowledge gaps and environmental pathways, feedbacks and interactions that connect climate change to human disease or human health, to understand health risk, vulnerability, and resilience, 
to improve predictability and early warning of the frequency and extent of climate and climate-related environmental hazards to health, and to deliver usable data, information, tools, services, and effective innovative solutions that allow decision makers to better prepare for climate change impacts on health. So that's the fundamental proposal aims. Uh, and I think these, these three bits here are uh, sort of, I think I've covered this to some extent, but I wanna just reiterate this a little bit, which is that um, teams are, you know, in order, to, in, order to be, in order for your proposal to be eligible for Belmont Forum funds through this call and through any call really of the Belmont Forum, um, there, there needs to be at least um, PIs that are financially supported on the proposal from three participating partner agencies established in three different countries. Um, and I'll, get, um, we'll, I'll show you the list of countries. I'm sure you probably already know the list of countries that are already participating. And, um, and so that gives you an idea of where your team can be from in your proposal. Um, you know, the teams and the proposals need to demonstrate connections between natural health, social and economic sciences and stakeholders and how, and, and sort of, um, and, and in your narrative really articulate the roles of those different um, participate participants in, in all aspects of the project. Um, uh, the, the, there is a, an emphasis in the review process on what is a functioning team? Is there a team here that can work together across these, you know, fairly difficult sectors of society to create a product that is useful and has a, a, a pipeline for use, um, you know, oftentimes using the non-science or stakeholder partners um, to, to create that pipeline. And there is a fairly stringent um, data requirement and data management plan that is uh, um, required. Belmont Forum has a fairly, a fairly um, you know, is fairly strongly committed to open data and their policies reflect that. Um, so it's good to look at their open data policies. Um, and then there's some individual partner organization criteria, which I'll get into as we get to the last part of this. Some, de some dates and deadlines, um, uh, expression of interests um, uh, are due on May 6th. Full proposals are invited from that in, in uh, uh, um, late May. Um, and then deadline for full proposals uh, is in July. So there's an iterative process um, where the Belmont Farm is attempting to make sure that the expression of interests um, are, um, they first go through an eligibility check just to make sure that the partners and the proposers meet the eligibility of the Belmont Forum. Do they have you know, partners from three, uh, principal investigators funded from three different agencies in three different countries? Is there, a notion, is there some evidence that this, that this proposal team includes the key transdisciplinary components that is required under the call? Are they addressing the, the made, you know, something in the major themes? So those are the sort of compliance checks that happen early on then full proposals are invited from that. And, and then there's a, uh, um, in, 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 and then they'll be evaluated by, um, evaluated by a, a, a review team. And that gets back to the, uh, um, to the funders for a decision um, in October. Um, and so it's a fairly lengthy application process. What else do I have here? Okay, I'm gonna move forward with one more slide or two. Um, yeah, so this is the last section I think that's really important for before we just dive into questions, and, and which is essentially that anyone propose, pro, pro, um, being funded to the Belmont Forum really has to pay attention to what their funders want in that process. And so this is just a list of current countries and funding agencies, and, and in, what you will find on the BFGO website, which I'll pop up in a moment, is an annex for each one of these countries. So if you're from Turkey, you'd be working, you'd be working with Tibutak, and Tibutak has certain restrictions on what their funds can be used for. And so it's important that you are, you know, that you are applying for funds, if you're applying for funds in a proposal process and you're from Turkey, that you follow the rules that Turkey has put into their annex. For example, examples of rules that are sometimes in annexes is that some funders can do not only basic science funding, but they can also do implementation funding um, or communications funding or funding that is a little bit less traditional than just the research itself. Other funders can't do that. And so the, the, when you're organizing your workflow and who, who is receiving money to do what, it's kind of important that 
you put the funding for the right parts of the project in the places um, that um, are, are linked to funders that can fund that component of the work. So it's a bit of a puzzle problem. Um, most of the annexes aren't terribly restrictive. There are some examples, uh, the annexes in the United States this year tend to be a little bit more, for example, um, the, the NIFA annex and the NOAA annex are more in-kind than direct support, so it's important to look at those. Um, I'll, I'll just, uh, okay, so let me pause there and just say, um, we, what I was gonna do next is just go through some questions that were submitted before this call and answer those and then open it up to any other questions and people can tell us to go backwards and forwards, sorry, um, in, in the slides if they have questions on particular slides. Um, I'll pause here in case, that, in case there's something burning that someone wants to ask right now. Sorry, I'm, um, the, but I'll move forward otherwise. I think you can, you can raise a hand if you, if you want to ask a question right now. Okay, I'm going to move forward a little bit and then we'll, we'll keep going at this uh, and we'll ask questions in a second. Okay. Um, we have a question that just came up from... Oh, good. So the question is, does the coordinating PI of the whole consortiums have to come from one of the funding countries if there are already at least three partners funding and countries represented? Okay. Um, or in other words, could an in-kind institu institution lead? Well, that's a great question. Um, so I think, I think that, um, and I, I, before I answer that, I think it's important that I talk with what's called the, um, the International Program Office for this, or the, no, not, what is it called? The uh, TPO, Thematic Program Lead uh, Office, which is NERC. And so the, the UK funder has been leading this call. And Caroline has been doing that, Kershaw. And so um, I think that, so, so I, I don't want to steer you wrong on this. Um, fundamentally, as long as you have three, all of your, PI, all of your PIs, are receiving support, as long as you have three PIs receiving support from three countries, you should be technically eligible. Your question about whether the lead PI could come from a country that is only getting in-kind support, um, I think let's do that, I mean, if it, it depends on if it's explicit in-kind support from an annex, like for example, NOAA or NIFA in the US, or if it's a country that is not participating in this call. And if it's the latter, um, I think it's important I would, I would want to check that before telling you how to handle that um, because the last thing you want to do is put a bunch of effort into a proposal and get knocked out on some technicality. My understanding is that would not be a problem, but I should, we should dub, definitely double check that with the thematic program office before proceeding. Um, and let's see. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, I'm gonna sort of flip through these, these slides here quick. Question, uh, one sec. Can, can app, questions that have come up, can applicants from lower and middle income countries or other countries receive funding of in-kind support? Right, so, so here's, here's a, this is a, actually a really important question. And this is a, something the Belmont Forum has been struggling with for a long time, um, which is that, you know, fundamentally the funding for science typically comes from developed nations and the needs for sustainability science extend much further than, the, than, than those nations. And the abilities of a lot of these funders to fund principal investigators out of their own countries is very low. So I answered this is not yet. And, and I think that, uh, that may sound a little cryptic, but the, the, the truth is that, that we're you know, working with a couple of private foundation funders for this call that want to join explicitly to allow funding for um, PIs in countries that are not listed below from the funder list you see here. So right now, if you're from Brazil, Taiwan, Cote d'Ivoire, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Turkey, UK, or US, there, these are funders that are already in the call and PIs from any of these countries can, can be a part of the, the collaboration. You can clearly include people in other countries but they can't receive direct support from the, fu from the funders that are currently in the funder list. To alleviate this problem, we're working with private foundation funders to join the call to allow direct funds to, tra to travel to 
though to principal investigators in lower and middle income countries. Um, so what I would suggest is if your project involves you know, work in a country that is not listed here, and particularly if it involves work in a lower and middle income country, um, definitely list those collaborators. And in the full proposal process, within the next month or two, um, the, the hope is that the consortia of funders will have expanded sufficiently. So there may be opportunities for the budget to be expanded in the full proposal to include direct funds for those participants in lower and middle income countries. Um, and, and so I wish we knew exactly which countries were going to be eligible. We don't because that is up to those um, less traditional science funders who might join from a, the private foundation space. Where do they want to see their funding used? Um, so that's, this is an important distinction. The best advice I can give is to make sure that you, you put the right people on the proposal to get the work done and that you, and if they are not eligible for funds at this time, that's, you know, make sure they know that and that they are, and, and that their participation, um, that there may be funds to directly support their participation and their, um, as the proposal process continues. Not an ideal answer, I recognize. Um, Nope, oh, sorry. I have the, there's this slide seems a little bit. Okay, good. Um, two other two other questions that came up. Um, can can funding be aggregated from different funding sources? That you know, absolutely. So each of the annexes from each of the agencies that are participating has a cap on how much they will allow for a particular project. That could be two PIs in the same country or one PI in the same country. If a PI in one country is applying for funds from NOAA and NSF, for example, two US agencies that are contributing to this call, they can absolutely aggregate their budget so that their budget is, is, um, includes the caps of both of those, or is the, is the sum of the caps of both of those agencies. Another question that came up was, can PIs submit more than one proposal? Um, I would say it's, it's generally frowned upon, um, and uh, I think it may be actually an explicit um, uh, it, it could be a reason for a proposal being removed from consideration. So I would not do that. I would not do that to your collaborators um, because it could result in, the, in, in both proposals being removed. I don't know if it would, but I would avoid that. And, I, and, and, if, you have a, and if, if someone who asked that question has a specific circumstance they want to um, want to look at, I'm happy to bring that to Caroline at the, at the thematic program office. Okay. Um, I think this is the last slide of questions that have come up. Um, so this one, um, Jules and I looked at a little bit, trying to find a good answer for this. Um, and it's really around the framing of your, of your research, proposed research and, um, and whether you need some sort of a case study from their own region. And if so, um, you know, whether those case studies need to be linked to, uh, national, to national priorities um, or linked across the project. And so I read this question as, sort of how much restriction is there on what you propose? And the answer to that is not a lot. In other words, a consortia of three PIs from three different countries can feel free to submit a proposal <clears throat> to work in one of those countries together, to work in all three of those countries together, to work in a fourth country together. Those are all, those are all um, options um, for the PI team. The restriction on who can get funding and the transdisciplinarity of the team itself is not meant to say that you need to work in all three countries on projects um, that come together across those three countries. You can, and there have been some good strong proposals that have used case study approaches in previous collaborative research actions to explore common themes, but it's not a requirement. Um, and then the, the, uh, the caveat here is always, of course, check your annex to make sure that what you're proposing to do is actually on is actually seems applicable given the country annex that you're requesting money from. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, oh, and the last this other question was just simply around how do the team how do <coughs> how do the consortium projects interact um, for the sake of knowledge transfer? And there's two levels of this interaction. So by definition, the proposal teams themselves are transnational and transdisciplinary. And so there's a recognition by the Belmont Forum that there's, now, there's um, translational work that needs to go, happen between disciplines and between sort of geographies to create a successful uh, proposal and to implement that research. 
And there's also learning that can happen between funded teams. The first part of this, the how the team coordinates its work across geographies and disciplines is up to the team. There's, and, and certainly um, it's expected that as part of the proposal process that the proposers will put in some funds to come together, to, to work together on projects so that there's some travel funds expected as a part of your process. The second part is, you know, how do you, how do you extract greater knowledge from a group of 10 or 15 different proposals and how do you make sure that the field advances in this way? Future Earth works with Belmont Forum um, and other partners uh, to create opportunities for the different teams to come together. So every Belmont Forum call, once teams are selected, starts with a kickoff meeting where we invite two to three representatives to one place to really walk through um, the transdisciplinary nature of the research and to, and to do joint learning about what each team is proposing to do. Op oftentimes that leads to collaborations that weren't expected. And there is often a mid a mid uh, um, mid project synthesis meeting or a mid project meeting where again all the teams come together to explore what have they have accomplished so far what are they running into in terms of problems how how easy or how hard or what tools have they learned for doing the kind of transdisciplinary research that they proposed and then there's also a final meeting or a valorization meeting and all of these are sort of there is a requirement in their proposal to put the travel funds for these meetings in in the proposal itself so just to make sure that that's a part of your budget. Um, last, I think the last slides here, here on this is, um, does, the pro does the project team have to include three institutions from three different countries or three institutions that are eligible <coughs> for funding from three different Belmont funders? The, 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 there needs to be in your PI team, um, PIs that are requesting funds from, um, at least three different funders that are in three different countries. So a, a team that, it, that had a, a PI requesting funds from NASA or from NOAA and another one from NSF and a third one from say Tipu Tech in Turkey would not be eligible because it only has two countries represented, uh, Turkey and the US. Um, and then the last question is the budget shown in the call info per institution or per project? And it's per project. Um, so if you have two collaborators in Turkey, together their budget need, need not, it must be um, under the cap uh, that Tibutak is set for Turkey, for example. Um, I think that's all I had here. Good. Okay. So that's a general overview. Um, if people want to, at this point, I think it's important for just to talk through any of the practicalities um, of this before we just do a, a bit more general um, engagement um, across the people who are on the call. Um, so any uh, open floor. If anyone has a question. Julie, do you want to add something uh, to what Josh has mentioned? Oh, hi, Julie. I didn't see you on the call. Julie, um, Julie, I think your microphone is muted. I can unmute. Yeah, I cannot unmute her. Um, yeah, she... There. How about that? Okay. Hey, Perfect. look at that. Can you hear me? I can. Let me turn on my microphone. There, how's that? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, so the only thing, uh, this is Julie Turcon from NOAA, and I was involved in this process um, not as long as Josh has in future, but sh shortly after the uh, initial proposal to the Belmont Forum last year. And I just wanted to add one thing about the in-kind contributions because we um, thought a lot about that, as you know, and it's, it's not always a common piece of the, of the proposal process, but the in-kind contributions, so for the US, we have in-kind contributions from our National Institutes of Health, our National Institutes of Food and Agriculture, and for NOAA, especially on the data side. And those contributions can count as one of the three countries. So I just wanted to clarify that we have already put that out there and we've discussed that um, several times. So 
it would count. So you could have a, it, it, you could have a, a person who was working with an NIH, you know, global health grant and um, applying to, to NOAA and um, NIH for grant money. And you would still have to have two other countries though. So you might have three institutions in one country, but you'd still have to have two other countries. You could also apply just with the in-kind as your country contribution from the United States. So that's, that's where we are with the in-kind contributions. Thanks, Julie. That's great. That's a well, and so just so people are aware, Julie was aware. We're sorry about the, the slides. Julie has been involved in the sort of in as a both a, so, you know, supporting the contribution that NOAA has made to this, and also on helping to support the development of the call. Yeah, and I um, one other comment on your uh, was I think the first question about uh, funding lower middle income country contributions, and I would just echo Josh's. Uh, very diplomatic response. We we wish we had a more solid answer. We are looking very actively to try and get a more institutional response to that. But Josh, I thought your answer was good, and we're doing the same thing. You know, if you have a connection with a donor organization or you have funding already, mention it, list it, pull it in. Um, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Until we can get a a better fix. <laughs> so. Thank yeah. You no, that's great. I mean, I think what Julie is saying is really important and it adds, it adds a layer that I had not mentioned, which is that, you know, the Belmont Forum is all about linking funds to create, to create opportunities to do research that would be very difficult to do otherwise. And so if you can, you know, build on work that is going on, and it, even if that work is going on and funded through, uh, through, a, through a process that's not a part of Belmont, I think it is important to mention that. And it helps sort of expand and deepen your links. Um, and to the the areas you're working in, I think that's really good. Yeah. And we are trying, to, Josh. Um, I just wanted to raise. I'm sure you guys will do this, but if we are able to secure any sort of you know larger institutional collaboration on that front, we will definitely send out a blast wide and and as far as we can reach. But also because we are still working on that piece of it, please also be sure to check the website periodically as you're putting your applications together and I'm quite yeah that's really good that's good my my hunch is that I think mean, that, that 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 institutional fix would come in between the first phase in which we have a, a you know expression of interest sort of phase or, or mm -hmm. letter of intent and the full proposal process and the, I think the hope from Erica Key who's the executive director of Belmont Forum is to have whatever fix is there in place fairly early or early in that in that period so people have time to prepare when, when creating their full proposals yeah another thing another thing to recognize is that you know the pre the the the, the, in, the intent phase is making sure that you have a, a minimum viable team and you certainly can add you know between the the, the first letter of intent and the full proposal you you cert, you pro, you can add players you go forward, but you need to include that minimum viable team in the full proposal. Um, that's great. And, and I also see that, boy, I mean, there's a bunch of people on this call, um, some of them who've been involved, um, Chadia, Joy, um, others have been involved in the creation of the call itself. Um, and if anyone else wants to lean in on either a question or some information that they can provide about this call, I think it's a great time to do it. Chadia uh, requested if you could explain a little bit more on the three countries issue. Yeah. So, yeah, Chadia, Joshua, go ahead. Yeah. Just uh, this uh, about uh, uh, when you said three participating institutions from three countries, just if you can clarify a little bit about it. Yeah, let me back up to a previous slide where it shows who's already, this is, this is a useful slide. So, for example, here you have a list of committed funders um, in the call as, as, as of the present date. And so a, a proposal team, a, a, a viable team that would submit a letter of, a letter of intent um, uh, would be one that had a PI that was funded, for example, from the PESP in Brazil, from MOST in Taiwan, and say AKA in Finland. That's a viable team. And so it has three PIs from three different Belmont Forum countries that are 
um, or three different funding agencies in three different countries. An, a team that would not, another team that's viable is a team that has a US participant using, using NOAA funds for in-kind support, a, team, a, a PEI from Norway getting funding from RCN, and a team, and a team from, and a team, and a PI from Sweden getting funds from Forte. Right, that that is a viable team also because even though the U.S. participant is just is getting in kind and not direct support, they still count as a member of that three-person PI team, as Julie was saying. And so those are both viable teams. A team that would not would be kicked out because it was not viable would be um, if you had a two participants in the U.S. one getting NSF funding, one getting NOAA in kind support, and then someone from Cote d'Ivoire, for example, or Taiwan. In which case you have three agencies, but not three countries represented in your team, right? So the, the key is building a team that you know is able to take advantage of the funding that the Belmont Forum is offering. There's, there's one more really important trick in this, and you can see in the annexes and in the call exactly how much funding each funder is putting in, and so um, if you are looking to build, and so for example. I'm just going to, as an example, if um, if AKA if, if Finland were only putting in a total of say half a million dollars into this call, then and they put a cap of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for for participants from Finland for projects from Finland, that means that Finland would only be funding projects two projects. They would only be fund. There would only be two successful projects that had a Finnish investigator funded. If, if, if UKRI is putting in 8 million and they are saying $500,000 cap, then in principle, they could, they could fund, you know, 16 different projects in that process, you know? Um, and so look at where you're, who's putting in the funding and thinking about building your team as well, particularly when thinking about the needs of your team. Other um, other more questions on that practical questions. I'm going to just quickly shut um, uh, drop. Um, I'm going to stop the share and just show the Belmont for just show one more piece of information that's useful for folks. Actually, we we're almost out of time here, so I don't want to do that. Um, John, I would say, yeah, go ahead. Um, one piece here. Just this is Julie Turton again. Um, yeah, why is Sorry. there any <laughs> um, the, I just stopped the share so I could show the, 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 the BFGO website. Keep going. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say I, I'd see that um, the National Institutes of Health isn't listed as an, it, it, um, on, your, on your list, and they mm -hmm. came in a little bit after the original thing. So I just wanted folks to know that um, in terms of health agencies and capacity, um, the National Institute of Health is, has a network of global health grants and centers around the world and a few other in-kind contributions that they have um, been able to secure for um, collaboration here. So it is linked on the website, I think, actually, it should be. It was a couple days ago. Um, so, oh, that's good. Thank yeah. you, Julie. Yeah. yeah. And I just wanted to point out this BFGO website, which is um, quite a useful place. It's just bfgo.org. And on that, you will see um, the, first, the first entry is the climate, environment, and health um, information and the call document. There's a link to call documents, right, with updated, um, updated information on, you know, expressions of interests um, and, you know, the, and, and the other dates. This is where to look for changes. Um, and the call documents will have, you know, in that um, a whole, this set, the call for proposals, and then down here, is the annexes that you would need to read from, from your particular location. And it looks like the, the NIH annex is not in there yet. That's part of the reason. So I will, I will check touch base with Erica and to make sure to understand why that is. But the, the call for proposals and all the forms are here as well. So that will, get, that will get you what you need in terms of what is available from your particular location. Um, other other questions? Uh, I see them in the chat now. I've got that. Uh, 
Yeah, so I don't see any questions in the chat, other questions in the chat. I think we should just spend just a little bit of time because there's um, uh, um, a good number of people on this call. Just to sort of go, go around the table and just say where you're from and the, um, a little, just a, a very brief amount of just introduce yourselves to each other just so we get an understanding of, you know, uh, so you can start connecting with each other. One of the things that Gilles and I talked about is that right after the call, um, I think there was a question on the survey about were you comfortable um, you know, were you interested in, in meeting other folks or, or, con, or connecting with other interested parties as you develop um, this process? And then most people said yes. And so everyone who said yes will, will send out a, um, a, uh, a list of people who were a part of the call and um, who wanted to be connected with others and just a little very brief details that they provided. So there'll be a follow-up so you can connect individually. But it might be good just to go around the table and just say where you are, what you're, where you're from, um, so we uh, uh, so we can connect. Is that what you wanted to do, Jules? Is that about right? That's right. Yeah. Let me see if I can go back to the the uh, um, the the. Um, I'm going to stop the share and go back to the presentation just so people know. So anybody that wants to go first can just maybe type something in the chat and. Uh, we can make that happen. Be right there with the share. Okay, sorry, there we go. Just catching up to where we are. Okay, anyone wanna start? We could call on people, but that's not very nice. Oh, we have, okay. Um, Charia, do you wanna go first? Yeah, thank you. Um, this is Shadia Wanus, I'm public health professionals. I work mainly on health emergencies and risk reductions. Um, in the past 13 years, I was working with the UN agencies on this. Um, I'm part of the development team of the Health CAN and also uh, the science uh, committee for the One Health project uh, uh, led by EcoHealth Alliance. I'm currently based in Sweden. Um, and the topic that I would like to focus on it's uh, about uh, climate sensitive uh, infectious diseases um, and how we can prevent uh, pandemics uh, from happening. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. We have another uh, introduction here from Shoro Dasgupta. Do you want to speak up a little bit? Hi. Yes, thank you. This is Shoro Dasgupta from CMCC Italy. Uh, we are forming a consortium on heat and health and we would be very interested in stakeholders from Africa and Asia to work or to collaborate on our um, consortium that is mostly going to be using uh, micro data sets from various countries. Thank you. I just want to check, double check on that. You you said you're um, applying in from Italy. Yes, so we're going to be a known uh, or fee paying partner, and we're we're going to be collaborating with institutes from Finland, um, the UK, and the US in okay. our consortium. Yeah, okay. to have three three partners from three. Uh, eligible institutions, yes. Okay. And are you looking for particular people on the call here to connect with? Um, yes, that would also be very interesting. So I came in a bit late, so I missed the first part. I, it's the, the, the time zone wasn't in my favor. Okay, Sorry. okay. thank you. Okay. Who's next?
perhaps you could just speak up. Uh, you don't have to go through the process of uh, of the chat. So just yes. unmute your mic on the left bottom of the screen and uh, just say your name and what your intention is. I'm seeing if I can help out with anything here. I don't know. Can't quite see the. If anyone else wants to. Uh wants to share, I think that's fine. We only have about five minutes left. If there's any other questions, feel free to go ahead and, 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 uh, and jump in, okay? And I think everyone can unmute themselves at this point. Um, that's right. I have one while we're waiting. So just jump on in. Um, if you have, uh, I, I will say there's one other sort of a <clears throat> reason, there's, there's certainly opportunities to connect. We will provide a list of everyone who's on the call so they, they said they wanted to be connected. So if you answered yes to that, you'll get that email as well. And uh, um, there's a couple other resources that we can just, we can uh, also include a little bit more about our, about how we can, how Future Earth can help out. I think easily, we'll, we'll include certainly my email and Gilles' email on this as well. And so that you can reach out directly to us and we can certainly flag issues for the thematic program office. At, uh, at NERC and with it, with Belmont Forum itself, with Erica Key and others and their staff as needed. Um, and then if you're looking for broader connections across um, the health ecosystem, there is a community within the open network that Future Earth runs that is focused on, on health, on planetary health, and on climate and environment and health, and, and a, a fairly active group of researchers and innovators on that on that community that um, you can also join and, and engage with them. Um, I think, <clears throat> and there's also, I see Jules, you put in the health at futureearth.org. So that's a great place to sort of send your email as well. I believe, is that right? Where does that yeah. go, Jules? Yeah, health at futureearth.org comes to me and I can easily share that uh, with whatever yeah. department you're looking for. Well, that's great. Um, Hi, Josh. This is Joy at uh, the WHOWMO Joint Office. Um, I'd also be happy to share my contact as, as a research, as a resource. I've been in touch with six or seven different teams uh, trying to, to broker their partnerships. Uh, and the WHO regional offices, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, particularly through the Global Heat Health Information Network, uh, we've raised particular interest uh, from the heat-related partners. So those wanting to make further contacts, I'm happy to, to try and help. Well, that's great. Thanks, Joy. That's fantastic. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure that Joy's email is in there as well. And uh, um, um, if there are if there any, any further questions or comments that we might be able to hit before we uh, let people on with their day or evening or early morning or however it may be, Hi, this is uh, Suzanne Holt Ballard. Uh, just I introduce myself. I also have a quick question, if I may. Um, yes. My specialty is uh, urban health, smart cities, and the nexus between uh, human health, environmental health, through the lens of exposure science. I participate in Horizon 2020 projects, and I'm curious about the funding for. Uh, this call in terms of the expectation that there be deliverables, there be some products mm. that would arise out of projects. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking at the funding requirements of the different funders in the different locations, and they, they all seem to be very research oriented, funding for <laughs> academics as opposed to SMEs or uh, other organizations, community-based organizations, etc. And I'm wondering what the expectation is with regard to um, deliverables or outcomes? Is it simply analytics? You know, is it simply data products or are we looking for some, you know, tools, uh, toolkits that are usable for, for communities or for yeah. other groups of stakeholders? Well, I think I've, you've done your homework and that this is, um, this is, an, um, this is, uh, um, here's what I would say about, about how 
this is put together. There are very few requirements, and it's it's part, you know it's certainly not global, and that reflects sometimes the diversity of funders. Um, it also reflects the fact, as you pointed out, that while the ambition is that it is research that has a direct pathway to impact, um, the requirements for that are fairly small, um, simply because the funding is limited oftentimes to research communities. And that's a product of the funders at the table. So the Belmont Forum is almost entirely made up of traditional science funders um, and their public sector funders for the most part. And that then means that the review process and the um, are, you know, and the funding allocation clearly has a strong research lean. Um, there are some notable exceptions, and I think the, the int our interest in bringing in foundation funders into the process to broaden this is a part of that. Um, and so, you know, the, the, but what you see, I think it is, it is really important that, um, that the, the proposals actually follow the lead of the funding on the table, and you're right, most of that funding on the table is for research. Um, not all of it, and certainly um, some some like some funders, for example, NOAA, for example, has you know strong interest in the application, and so some of their in kind stuff is 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 in that space. Um, but it does so. The I would just say that, yeah, no, very few um, requirements for deliverables. I think the Belmont Forum is always appreciative of proposals that combine strong science with a clear pathway to delivery even though they aren't able to fund that whole pathway. Okay, thanks, that makes a lot of sense, thank you. Yeah, no, great question. I just wanna raise quickly, uh, Timothy Carter uh, in the chat, his mic isn't working, um, ah. with the Finnish Environmental Institute. Um, and he's interested in collaborating on thermal stress. Uh, they're uh, coming from three institutions in Finland, two in UK, working with Shoro in Italy, um, who was talking about, uh, or asked a question about stakeholders earlier. Uh, oh, great. Their, his consortium is open to link with other countries, um, as Joy has mentioned as well. Very good. And hopefully we can continue this um, on through email. We sent that email to folks, and you can feel free to connect as well on that. And, and if we can also be of a Distance connecting with you with anyone on the open network if you need that you know that's another well i think um, we should probably wrap can i up. ask Any a last question of course so, yeah so i i want to put to, or it's a follow-up of, uh, of the last question that was asked on on deliverables so there's a lot of the call text puts a lot of emphasis that's on good. stakeholders and then okay. but it seems that most of this is going to be academic research what is lots of the expectation not the requirement but the expectation from involving stakeholders yeah great case. question great so um so the, the expectation is that your team includes includes a a on an organization or an individual who is clearly within the stakeholder community you're trying to access and and the expectation is is that that team member um, as a non-science partner would still be a part of shaping the science. Um, and, be, and, and the rationale for that is that, that they would be the user, the end user, or a end user, one of many potential end users, and that having them in the team at the beginning, um, hopefully funded to, to participate if needed. Um, sometimes they're in advisory capacity, other times they're sort of the product. I think there's a, someone may need to mute there. Um, but the expectation is that the team actually has this non-science stakeholder partner embedded in the team and that they are helping to move the process forward with the same sort of uh, commitment, if possible, as the researchers, recognizing that, of course, the actual research needs to be done by folks trained in that field, but that the questions being asked and the methods being used should be appropriate to the uses that are needed by, broader, by the broader society. It's a really important question. That's good. So, 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 sorry to drag this on because one, one issue is that so stakeholders, let's say, from countries that are not funders, right? This could potentially be an issue, but again, this, yeah, but it's just me it thinking out loud, right? It's not as right. 
No, this is a good point. It's, I mean, I would, I, would, I would encourage folks to be creative in, in how they allocate their funds. Oftentimes, travel, for example, um, for, yeah. for folks from other countries is, a, is, is something that can be funded. Um, whereas salary is actually very difficult for, for, for example, non-PIs in countries that are not applying. And so travel funds to make sure your whole team gets together to engage that key stakeholder or stakeholders from countries that are not directly funded is probably a, a, useful, a useful process. Um, and the, I guess the systemic solution is not in place, but in, in some instances, I know in the U.S. for the National Science Foundation, and I think this is true for any of the other Belmont Forum uh, funders, travel, you know, the uh, participant travel for folks that are not PIs is, is, is actually fine. So there are ways of at least bringing people together. Oftentimes you need more than that, but I do, there are some partial fixes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, really good point. Um, okay, this has been really good and really insightful for me. I'm hopeful that other people gain something from it as well. Um, Jills, thank you so much for putting this together. And um, also Julie, Joy, Chadia, who have all been involved in that process and have offered their support. Thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, um, feel free to get in touch through health at futureearth.org. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day. All right. Take care. Thank all. you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.